another edition of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Weekly Podcast with your hosts, Dave Negri. This program is dedicated to helping contractors, remodelers, painters, roofers, roof cleaners, and business owners in the construction industry gain an unfair advantage over the competition. This program supplies you with information that the competition doesn't even know exists. This session brought to you by ContractorsSecretWeapon.com. Before we get into the conversation with you, I just want to do a shout out to our sponsors who help uh, promote uh, Contractor Secret Weapon and just some of the things that they have in store for you, our listeners. Hey, is your phone ringing enough? Do you want it to ring more with highly motivated and qualified buyers that contact you, the contractor, directly? No more waiting for the phone to ring. Just answer that phone. Best Home Services leads are dedicated to making your phone ring with motivated buyers that call you directly. There's no obligation to talk with them. Just go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash money. Fill out the form to secure your discount on the setup fee. Do it today. This special will not last forever. Check them out at ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash money. Running a small business is no easy task, and I should know because I had a service company for almost 10 years. I am the founder of a software called Radius Bomb, and it's unbelievable. And for all the listeners of Contractor Secret Weapon, we have a special offer for you to check out. If you want to send hyper-targeted, laser-focused, super-personalized postcards to your exact prospects using a map while sitting in your underwear, then go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash Radius Bomb, and we'll give you your first hundred postcards for free. Just go to ContractorSecretWeapon.com forward slash Radius Bomb. Hey, this is Dave Negri with Contractor Secret Weapon. Thanks so much for stopping by today. And if you haven't been to the new website, you need to go there. There's some neat things on there, new uh, downloads for you, free stuff. And I just, you need to go there. And, you know, as we look at our businesses, we have a tendency to always want more. We want more business. We want more relationships. And we want more, figure out how to get more publicity free. And that's the topic today is how to get free publicity. So today I have with me Sharon Bolt. Sharon is a publicity expert and founder of Get Free Publicity Today. So that's what we're going to talk about. She has been a business owner and entrepreneur for over 16 years. Sharon's businesses have included alternative health therapies and dog training and during the last 10 years she has contributed to more than 40 different local and national newspaper magazine television and radio shows and she's received over one oh two million dollars worth of free publicity and free advertising she's a co-author of two highly acclaimed books called successful women in business in Every Entrepreneur's Guide to Running Your Own Business. Sharon was featured as a dog training expert in the BBC documentary and has a regular slot on the BBC radio since 2008 where she answers the listeners' dog's dilemmas, to name just a few of her media accomplishments. Although she maintains a regular dog training slot on BBC radio and media commitments, her focus nowadays is on teaching startups, business owners, and entrepreneurs how to build a brand Increase visibility and generate sales by cleverly using free publicity. Sharon has a free report, which we'll give you access to later, on how to write an attention-grabbing press release that creates a win-win situation in the media, which can be downloaded on our website, and that will be on the show notes. Get free publicity today. Sharon, I am so excited to have you here today so that you can share with our listeners uh, basically, how to get free publicity, but more than that, it's how to create win-win situations with the media and get you and your business featured time and time again. Uh, tell me, how did you get started into this uh, PR business? Well, yes, it's uh, actually quite shocking for people, Dave, when I first tell them about my first media experience because I got myself booked on BBC Radio 2, which is a national radio station in the UK, without any prior media exposure. Now, what is even more shocking than that to people is that I was introduced as a dog training expert answering dog behavior questions when I actually had a natural healing therapy business and not a dog training business. (laughs) What had happened, Dave, is we'd got two young puppies at eight weeks old, Parson Russell Terriers, and I started to... 
Oh, really great fun. Yeah. And <laughs> we started looking for puppy socialization classes. And I spoke to numerous dog trainers because they were all full. But when I said what I had, they said, oh, my goodness, this is the worst case scenario. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're going to fight for the top dog position. They do what they like. And you'll very likely need to rehome one. Now, as you can imagine, Dave, I was devastated. I thought, yeah. do you know what? It's like giving up a child, isn't it? You yeah. know, you've just got these lovely, cute puppies. So I said out, out loud, I remember I looked at them. They were in my hands, one in each hand. And I said, you two are not going anywhere. So I was on a mission to find a way that they understood it had to be kind and gentle. And so I started developing this particular training method that they were understanding. And it was really around about, I don't know, four or five months into that, I was getting great results with them. I'd introduced my dog training methods to my complementary therapy clients who had problems with their dogs and everything was going really well. So when I saw this opportunity come up on the national radio, I thought to myself, do you know what? I can make a difference. I could go on that TV program and reach a lot of people and I could speak to them in a way that they could understand and I could give them some really valuable information. So I thought I'm going for it. And it took three emails. It didn't happen straight away. And what really was within a week, I was then sitting in the London studio speaking to over four million listeners about dog training. Wow. You know, and really, in, in retrospect, that was like overnight, you know, three emails. Um, yes. Because that's really quick. I, I can't, I mean... That's pretty awesome. And then you get on a show, would you say, 4 million people? Yeah, there was over 4 million wow. listeners. So the, the, the radio station actually branded you as a successful dog trainer. Absolutely. And this was the thing, David, is I, I wasn't set up for this. I had no dog training website. I had no dog training business. I had nothing that I could actually link these people to. So... In retrospect, I, it was great that I had done it, but it wasn't a business thing for me as such. Right. It wasn't a money-making thing because I had nothing set up. But what it did do is, as you rightly said, it branded me as a leader in the dog training profession Profession that because I had been featured as a dog training expert on national radio. Wow. So that's really, I mean, that's pretty funny in a sense if you look at it. Because most of us will start our business and we'll get all the stuff set up and then we'll go become experts. And you pretty much did it the other way around and you got you got the national media attention and uh, you got branded as the dog expert and now you could actually put your business together. That's right. So it opened up numerous doors for me naturally because I could put this on all my marketing. Yeah. So when I when I did get my website together and everything, of course, it, it really did position me so, so well. But I always say when I speak to people now about business owners um, and, and saying to them what they need to do, I always, always say, get yourself sorted. Don't miss out on opportunities naturally. Like, you know, I, I didn't miss out on that opportunity yeah. and I'm so pleased I didn't. But in an ideal world, get yourself the website and in particular, a freebie on your website, a free report, an, mm -hmm. an ebook, some download of some sort, a cheat sheet, cheat sheet, template, whatever it is, it's a value to your potential clients so that when they come to your website, they can sign up for your free report or whatever it is that you're offering them and you can then start building a relationship with them. Right. Yeah. Wow. So how did they, just out of curiosity, did, uh, did you start getting phone calls or... Did you just do another show or just continue on that, that path of uh, doing more interviews with the radio station? Well, it was so funny, Dave. It's such a good question because from that one appearance on national radio, and as I said to over 4 million listeners, I got zero business from it. Okay. Be because I had nothing that I could link people right. to. So people couldn't contact me. So it, I had nothing for them. 
But of course, when I then started to set myself up and I was then put in, you know, as featured, that was what yes, it was, as featured, featured on BBC Radio yeah. 2. When you start to say you're being featured in radio, newspapers, TV, whatever it is, it opens doors, not only for you and your clients, but also for other journalists too. So that oh. then, um, I mean, after that, of course, you know, I loved the whole thing. I, I thought to myself, this is really exciting. So I was on a mission with that then as well as dog training. And uh, that's when, yeah, since then, you know, I've done numerous TV interviews. I have a regular radio slot on BBC Radio, wow. uh, local radio. I've had that since 2008. So newspapers, it's, it just catapulted. Yeah. And, um, you Yes, I mean, from that from that one thing that I did. But I do understand that is not what everybody will want to do. You know, that can be a bit scary for people to just go and go for the big boys, you know, go and get in front of four million listeners when you don't feel quite confident enough. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I completely understand that. But I, uh, you know, I've got that, um, that bittersweet taste in my mouth. Yeah, I'd love to try it, but I'm not sure if I would. <laughs> well what i always say to people dave is don't wait for others to validate you don't right. wait for others to to approve of you or tell you you're good enough you you're the one that needs to be doing that for yourself because if you wait for other people then you know it's probably not going to happen too often and i remember back then i looked up in the english in the Oxford English Dictionary, what is the definition of an expert? And it's a person who is very knowledgeable about or skillful in a particular area. Now, as a business owner, we know so much more than most people do. Sure. And and the thing is, there's usually around about, I don't know, five to ten questions that we are regularly asked time and time again by our customers about our profession. So as long as you are well equipped with really good answers, then you are good to go. Yeah, you can talk about ten things for forever. <laughs> and I think as well, you know, when I think about startups, because I was naturally a startup sure. business. In fact, I was less a startup, Dave, because I had no website and I had I had no business. So, um, you know, even as a startup, it can be the, the thing that can catapult you into the limelight very, very quickly and open a lot of doors for you. That's uh, pretty amazing. And I just it just amazes me that and I'm sure. Now I'm thinking about you know thinking about your journey, and I'm sure that once after the first one was done, the rest were kind of easy because now you've got the part are you saying you know, as we I was featured on. Yes. So it's yes. Sort of more of a magnet because now they can trust you in a sense as being interviewed by them because you've somebody's already proven you. That's right. And it's it's a really good word that you use there, Dave, and that is trust. And it's not just that journalists trust you when they see these logos on your website. It's your potential customers, too. Sure. There's something that happens. You become a celebrity when you're featured in the media. Now, whether we love or hate the whole celebrity obsession that's rife in <laughs> society today, the bottom line is, is that your bottom line is going to grow tremendously if you're seen as a celebrity. Oh, absolutely. Because as, as the celebrity, you know, uh, you don't have to be out in the limelight, but the celebrity expert, in a sense, in your local community, now people are going to... Uh, you know, look at you differently than they do another, let's say, another contractor or another uh, roofing contractor, another painting contractor, because you can, you know, as, you know, interviewed by or you can put an article that you were interviewed on your website or, or even put it in your your, your own uh, marketing campaign. So it, it, that, that celebrity uh, I like. Not, yes. Not the balloons and the cheering and all that other stuff. <laughs> you know, yeah. As a celebrity status in, in business means that you become very quickly the go-to person right. and the authority in your field. Right. So basically, I, so I'm thinking as, as we're talking back and forth, if I become the celebrity expert in my, um, in my field, 
then basically what that does is it sort of slices away the competition, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it elevates you above right. the rest. That's right. for sure. And it is, you know, naturally you need to come up with the good. You know, sure. this isn't this isn't about obviously faking it. it. This is about being authentic and open and everything. And But to me, Dave, it's so much about self-belief because, you know, as business owners, we think to ourselves, well, I just need to be in business at least a number of years or people need to be reflecting back and telling me I'm doing a good job. And I'm here to tell you, don't wait for all of that. Start telling yourself that story. Start right. looking about what you're doing right rather than what you're doing wrong and start believing in yourself because this is a big, big thing that's going to make a difference. Well, and if we don't give ourselves a title, no one else is going to. That's it, Dave. That's exactly, isn't it? Don't wait for somebody else to call you an expert. Right. You have to claim that. And if, you know, you feel a bit awkward about that, then call yourself a leader or a, an authority in your field or even a specialist. You know, sometimes people feel a bit, oh, I can't call myself an expert. I feel a little bit too too self-important. And this isn't about making you feel yuck inside when you say it. So so get use a phrase that means the same. You know, if it's specialist, some people like to say, you know, I'm a specialist or, or I'm an authority in this particular niche it doesn't matter what it is but claim that spot right because it's it's well worth the real estate it absolutely is and people just see you you see the thing is when when you see an advert when people see an advert in a newspaper for example of course, they're, they're a little bit sceptical because they, they know that they are, are being, well, that they're, they're, they're giving something that they need to buy. Someone's trying to sell them something. When you're featured in the press, you suddenly become believable and what you said earlier, Dave, trustworthy. It overcomes a lot of hurdles. And also what happens is because you're positioned in a way, people expect you to be more expensive than the other people in your field. I like that uh, Yes, <laughs> it's the easiest way that I found to get people to want to do business with you right. rather than you having to go find people and trying to sell to them. Yeah, there isn't as much of a price resistance because they're coming to you. You're, you're that's the one right. That's being sought out, and and that's one of the things that I've always uh, I've always said I would rather be an invited guest than a pest. <laughs> I like that, Dave, and it's so true, isn't it? And uh -huh. what happens is when people see you featured in the press, or it could be on on TV or in, on radio, what happens then is that it, it's like a non-verbal endorsement from that media outlet that you're the best of the best. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I was on this uh, similar thought process. I was in Rhode Island not too long ago at a seminar, and there was a uh, a, a contractor who is going to, he's going to expand, he's, it's been taking him about a year and a half to do this. Uh, he's going to expand his territory across the United States. So what he did was he went and got free publicity from the, from the TV stations, interviews, free interviews from the TV stations, making him the expert at what he does. And then when he moves into those areas, he'll just plop that up on his website. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And that's for national. Now, local. Now, here's the thing that uh, you had uh, sent over and we talked about um, uh, that you s people often say that we need to come up with a story angle when you send a press release or a pitch to the media. What What is meant by a story angle? Yeah, so uh, this is really good. Um, what happens here, Dave, is that there is a, a story topic. So what I'll get, I'll give you an example because this can this will explain it and hopefully get some really good advice for people that are listening here. One of the ways that I think is really, really good at getting and and easy at getting publicity is is what's called newsjacking. So what you do is you see what is hitting the news. So what topics, what stories are hitting the news. And then what you do is you look to try and fine tune that and come from an angle that relates to your business. So let me give you an example so I can explain this further. Okay. 
One of the things that happened just recently or a few years ago now, I think it is, was that Brad Pitt and Angelina, Angelina Jolie, they split up, didn't they? Yeah. Well, it sent shockwaves around the world. It was everywhere. Now, with that became lots of different opportunities for different business owners. So, for example, at that time when that was rife in the news, a parenting expert could come up with a story idea such as how to make sure your child doesn't think a divorce is their fault. Okay. Now, f from the same story, a divorce lawyer could come up with something like seven steps to get in the best settlement from a divorce and still remain in friends. And also from that very same story idea, a marriage or relationship expert could come up with something like five sure signs that your marriage is heading for divorce. So you take what is going on in the news and it could be something national like or international like that or it could be something that's just local to your industry and you, you take it and you look at how you can work that story and link it to your business. Cool. That's a great idea. I've seen that done uh, on various occasions but I'm um you know, you just put it into uh, just more of a workable state of actually thinking about it and then applying it, you know, to your business. You know, don't be like Brad and uh, Angelina, you know, you know, uh, you could get a better divorce settlement. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> I mean, it... maybe you can use their names and stuff like that because it's out in press. It's not. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's right. And also, be, you could use their names because everybody knows their names. Right. So you, just a headline like that is going to get attention. Sure. So it's it's really is, you know, uh, it, I say it doesn't have to be a big story, but it's something that's hitting the news or it's something that's in the local news to you that is is really saying about something. that, And you look at this news and you think to yourself, how can I link that to my business and how can I then become the expert and sometimes it is literally that you offer to comment on a particular story because you are an expert in that field mm -hmm. a lot of journalists love experts to comment on a particular a news story or something that that's come into the the press or or the media so they look for people to business owners experts to to give them some sound advice hmm, that's awesome so what as for like us local guys what what's the best way you are to come up with uh, some story ideas i i i know one of the no-nos is just pitching selling that's what you don't want to do right Yes, and that is that is so good that you said that, Dave, because it is the number one thing that business owners get wrong when they try to get publicity. They send out a, which really is little more than a sales pitch to a journalist, and then they wonder why they don't get publicity. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, this is what you need to know about journalists, that thankfully I, over the... Over the years, I've worked with so many journalists and I've I've interviewed many of them too when I've been creating my online publicity courses so I could get a perspective from them and oh, the best awesome. business owner. Yeah. So, so yes, I, I've got into the minds of them to find out what makes them tick and why they have a problem and don't bother with a lot of business owners. And the main thing is what they say is they are there if you think about their jobs they are professional storytellers they are there to edu educate inform and entertain their audience that is their number one focus and that's what they're interested in they are not interested in promoting a business owner but they will will talk about the business owner if they provide them a good story idea and great content mm. so when you send out a pitch and it doesn't matter whether it's local or whether it's it's national or even international the pitch is always about how you can benefit the journalist and importantly their audience interesting never never i know i that's pretty good. So let me just give you an example and tell me if this would be a good uh, 
to write an article for and and let's say that I had a business and that yes. we were doing a uh, a, a charity event. Yes. And uh, what we were going to do is we were going to raise money, however we were going to do it, and and then donate it to a specific charity. Now, that would be newsworthy, wouldn't it? Mm, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, well, what would make it newsworthy? Right. Well, ch ch charity is probably the one. It definitely wouldn't be um, national. No, you may get local. a. You may get a little little short column inch space on you know for the for a local newspaper, okay. but the way to get some really good publicity is to how can you connect it with something that is current because for a journalist it needs to be relevant and current and either new or something that is interesting to people now now obviously a local event is interesting to a local newspaper because local news newspapers are about educating and informing their local people okay. so so you, we're on the right track definitely but what is it about the event that we can link in so let me give you an example of how you could possibly do this let's say you are an image consultant and you are going to host a, a, a an event and you actually do it when it's Oscars when it's the time of the Oscars oh, okay. so can you see how in this event now we'll put some red carpet down we can we can really take in the theme of the the Oscars and link it into this event yes we can say it's for charity and, and of course if it is for charity but that's how to get a pub, um, publicity for an event mm. not just just to report that it's something that that someone's doing it has to be about it needs to be informative and interesting and and that to a journalist rather than it being about a business owner so did exactly. that explain it yes it did so if we we would do if we wanted to do something like that it could be around an event like you're saying could it be around a uh, holiday celebration Depending. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, and and what we're touching on here, Dave, is what's known as awareness days, and there's loads of those. So it, it would be something like it could be Christmas, yeah. it could be July the fourth, it could be Independence Day. You know, right. it could be any of these things that they're evergreen events that happen every single year. Yeah. So when you're planning your event, you think to yourself, right, let me have a look. What's coming up that is an, an awareness day or a celebration of something in, in line with what I can link my event to, now you've got a much better chance of getting some good publicity. Interesting. That's pretty cool. That is really awesome. Yeah, because I, I mean, there really is a fine line between uh, being a story and it just being information. Yeah, I mean, with some of the local newspapers, particularly if it's been a slow week, they they may report on on an event that's happening. But you know, if it's, certainly if it's charity related, but it's usually quite a small, well, not even a yeah. feature. It's it's just a, a small column. Yeah. Now, if you you see the thing is, if you start linking it your event and and you bring some some of the the links into what's going on, you can then invite the journalist and he can come and take photos. Oh, cool. You know, there'll be competitions you'll be running. There'll be testimonials from people saying what a fantastic event it is. You know, you can do before and after photos. You can even for an event, you can get publicity for coming up to the event and also after the event when you, you're getting, again, some good photos together and you're getting some some testimonials and things like that. Wow. That's excellent. That just you're, 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 you're not only you're inviting them in to be part of the whole thing so then now they can tell their own story yes and 
certainly here in the UK, in the like the local TV, they love things like that. Mm. You know, if, if I was to organise a, a dog event, for example, whereby, you know, I could be linking in with something like National Dog Day or yeah. National Take Your Dog to Work Day. There's so many of these national days and months and, and events and things that are happening all the time that you can link it in. And the more visual it is, if you want to get TV exposure make it very visual but obviously that's what it's all about Mm -hmm. so you make it very visual you you invite then the local media that could be the local press like your local newspapers tv radio stations you know you can go and get a a a quick feature on your local local uh, radio station talking about your event and the exciting things that are going to be happening and how people are going to benefit so it can you hear when i'm speaking about this dave it's nothing about my business it's all about all about how i'm going to create great entertainment how i'm going to to give great information to people to journalists and the audience oh and by the way my business is x y and z so it's at the end yeah it's like your business is is you know it's it's off but of course you get great exposure because you're the business owner, you're the right. person that's providing this, so people want to know who you are and what you're doing and how can they be a part of it. Mm. Wow, that's pretty wild. So what types of stories do they normally love, especially for, for local media? Well, the first thing that you need to do is to, to look at like headlines okay. because um, the, the it's important, obviously, to get them to open the, the email up straight away. Yeah. And what you do is you you want to relate it. The headline can be very simple. So say here local to me, one of the, the big towns is called Brighton. So if I was going to pitch a local paper that covers that region, in the headline, I would, I would put something like uh, Brighton dog trainer, um, changing changing the world or whatever it is but i would include the name of that that place because they know then it's relevant to them sure. i would also at the very very beginning include that it was i'd put something like pitch or story idea because the thing is with journalists whether it be local media or national media they get so many emails so you stand out straight away because you are saying to them that I've got a potential story that's going to be interesting to you. Okay. Okay, that makes so, sense. So you're, you're, you're creating a great subject line, which is basically your headline. And then, that's right. And then when they open it, it says potential pitch or potential story. Now, do they ever, just that I'm thinking off, probably off the wall here, uh, do they ever enhance the story or make it a little bit better, or do they just pretty much go with what your what you they, you've you've sent? Yeah, it all depends. What will happen okay. is if they if they like what you've said, then of course they contact you okay. and they interview you. It's you know if it was for a local newspaper, they will just contact you. You do an interview over the phone. It's really easy. You can have your notes in front of you. You know, obviously you'd prepare what you're sure. going to talk about in advance, and and then you know they would depending on how much column space they have available will be dependent on how big the feature. Will be but you know you can include photos it could be i've had you know i've done loads of local media interviews here with about my dogs that come and take photos of me and my dogs because it's obviously something visually that people like to look at so so you can really build on it and yes they will ask you questions but it's really down to you to come up with the goods okay okay i what i think it's great i just was just curious on how if they did edit it a bunch or depending and of course a lot has depends on this what they have available to put it into that space that's right that's right so so for example you know if they were looking to just fill a small a small place then it will it would just be a short interview but you know i've done numerous features and you know full page features wow 
So, you know, you come up with a great story and you, 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 you get creative, you know, you bring your business story into it, how you first got started. You know, for me, my business story about my dog training is about getting these two eight week old Parson Russell Terriers yeah. and being told it was the most disastrous thing I'd ever done. So, you know, you can then elaborate and get creative and, and yes, providing they have the space and then you say, well, I've got photos photos for you and and there it goes you know you're you're off off to the races that's pretty awesome that's amazing so i know that you have a free report that explains in detail how to write an attention grabbing press release uh that our listeners can download at uh, getfreepublicity.com however can you briefly explain what a press release is and why your why business owner should be using them yeah, this is this is really good, Dave, because whether it's a press release or a pitch, we we all need to be do, sending stuff out to, to the media for sure. But a press release, what it is, it's like a standalone document that we send to a, a journalist and it contains the information about what to include in it. Now, the idea of the press release is to give as give as much information while still keeping it to one page so that if it's just a small column that's, that a journalist wanted to report on, they could take information from that particular press release and and go with it. But there is a particular format to use. So that's why I've written this, fo- this free report so people can go and download this because I explain step by step what to include in each each paragraph so that it is user friendly for a journalist. Because the key thing here, Dave, is that that the trouble is a lot of business owners will send out a press release and they don't know how to format it and what to include in it and of course it, it never gets looked at right. so so that's why if, if people go to my website getfreepublicitytoday.com they can download that free report so they can start get 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 going with we can get some publicity straight away cool and we'll put that in our in our show notes too um this is really awesome. All this, all this fun stuff, and, <laughs> um, and of course, like you said, uh, email or not emails, but the headlines are so important when you want to introduce things. It's like, well, it's think about it. Writing an email to anybody, you want to grab their attention in that subject line so that they'll at least open it. Yeah, if I explain a little bit more about headlines okay. as well, Dave, because so, again, I like to be able to give some concrete stuff for people who are listening in because, I mean, it, my my intention is that people can go away and start getting some publicity themselves. And the, the thing to say about headlines is not to get too fancy about them, just be clear and concise. And so, for example, say you're a uh, heating engineer you could put something like three little known ways to save on heating bills interesting to people that's what people want to know about and in your headline you're summarizing what the story idea is about so if for example if you're a home removal company it could be something like a five-step checklist that ensures a stress-free house move every time now Everyone wants a stress-free yeah. house move, don't they? Yeah. So to come up with a checklist is going to be interesting to people. So putting what it is in the headline like that is going to be good and attention grabbing to a, to the right journalist, not to every journalist, to the right journalist. Right. And if you if you want me to, Dave, I'll explain a little bit more about that. Sure, absolutely. Now, what I mean by the right journalist is that another reason why business owners don't have success when they try to get publicity and one of the pet hates of journalists is that they are sent story ideas that is nothing to do with what they report on or what they they broadcast about. Wow, that's interesting. Mm. So it's like finding your niche. Exactly, but it's not just yeah. It's finding your niche. 
Uh, exactly. Yeah. It's finding your niche journalist. That's it. That's absolutely it, Dave. You hit it on the head there. You need to find the right journalist who reports on your type of story idea because you could come up with this amazing story idea and people would think this is fantastic. But if it's not what that journalist reports on, then it's going to not get picked up. Right. And he's not going to give it to the buddy he knows because that's like competition. Yeah, it really. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, you know, if they know somebody in a different department, yeah. they, they may forward it on. And that is very nice if the journalist does, but they're very, very busy people. So very often they think, well, if you can't do your homework, if you can't research and get the right person, well, delete. So here's, a, here's another thing that, that, that brings to my attention is, well, if you're going to send out a press release, and um, how often should you follow up after sending it? But here, or, in, or how long should you wait for no response? But, uh, and I'm going to ask a question after you, after you answer that. Okay. Well, yes, the, the key thing here is, Dave, is yes, we do follow up. That's that's the key thing to say here, because most people will send out a press release or a pitch. They hear nothing back. So we think, oh, they didn't like my story idea. Now, they may have liked your story idea. It may have gone into their maybe folder or it could have been that they thought, oh, yeah, I'll get back to this person. And then they hit a deadline or they get a, their attention is grabbed elsewhere and then they simply forget about it. So it is important that you follow up. And if it's just a. If it's a story idea that, you know, there's no really time, there's no time frame to it, then three to four days after you've sent it out is a good time to follow up. If it's something like an awareness day, so say Christmas is coming and mm. and the goose is getting fat, then uh, we do need to, to follow up fairly quickly if we've, you know, not left much time for that Christmas period. So um, although I do would, you know, say if we're starting to pitch about Christmas ideas, you need to start thinking about sending those out early December anyway. Sure, sure. All right, my next question, which was, is we talked about those niche reporters. How do we find those niche reporters? Yeah, yeah, great, great question, Dave. The One of the easiest ways, particularly with the local papers, and I know that um, you was quite interested in yeah. the local reporters and that, if you find your ideal publication, so your local newspaper, just read through it. They're very, very good journalists because particularly reporters, they put who they are that wrote an article and their contact information. So if you know there is John Smith who likes to report about educational matters and you have a business that is about educating people in some way, then this is going to be a good contact for you. So that, that would really, I mean, cut your... your your time down tremendously and your rejection down tremendously to find the right person. Uh, yes. Take that time to find the right person that, that deals in, in your area of, of expertise for local. And then let's say just for the fun of it, somebody uh, has a national company. Do they, is there a, like a website or something like that they can go to? Um, no, that they they can be some from time to time okay. like this, but the, the problem with the websites is that in journal journalism the people move on very very quickly. You you can oh. buy books and and lists and things like that, but I never recommend it, Dave, okay. because they they do change very very quickly. The best way to do it is to do your research and read the your ideal publication, mm -hmm. and if it's like a national, then get that paper you know read it inside out for at least a week get it every day for a week and see what type of story features they like to do on a monday on a tuesday on a wednesday because it will vary from time to time 
And yeah. then, then you're starting to find out who is it that is the editor for that section or the reporter for that section. So you're starting to find out who you need to contact. So if you've got something that is about, say, say there's a feature about, say, if I was doing, say, dog training, I wouldn't contact somebody who does something like image and and um, and health. Yeah. Unless I was, say it was health and fitness, as a dog trainer, I could go with the angle about how walking your dog keeps you fit. Yes. Okay. Do you see how I've linked that in there, Dave? Absolutely. So I could then contact that editor or reporter with that type of story angle, but I couldn't, you know, teach your dog's dog how to high five in three easy steps, for example, is not going to be interesting to somebody who reports about health and fitness. Wow. This has really been awesome. Um, one of the things, how, what do you, all right, how can our listeners get in touch with you because well, first we have we, we go through your website, and then let us know what exactly you do to help people get themselves to the next level if they to make it easier for themselves. I think that's probably the question I wanted to ask. Okay, Dave, thank you. Yes, the best place for people to contact me is my website, which is getfreepublicitytoday.com. So I say there's that free report so people can, can download that and start getting up and running with press releases. And what I've been working on and I will be launching quite soon now is I've been for, for the past three years, it's taken me to research and put together three online publicity courses. Oh, cool. So I yeah, so I'm so excited because I'm teaching business owners step by step how they can get publicity. It's completely A to Z, step by step, how they can get featured in the press, on radio and, and podcast shows, how they can get featured on TV with templates, how to do it, examples, everything a business owner will need in order to get lots and lots of pub publicity for their business. Wow. Boy, you've really uh, been taking a lot of time to put this whole thing together. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I can't wait to, to get going with it, Dave. I mean, I've just, as we're speaking now, I've now completed recording all of the videos and I'm just now working on some of the handouts and the templates and the, the examples. So, so I've got that all up and running. And uh, yeah, probably within the next two, three, four, I'm going to be holding some webinars, awesome. going to be giving some great content for people. And then if they would like to, to take it further, then I shall tell them about those opportunities at the end awesome so listen everybody go to sharon's website uh download the uh free uh, the, the free report i got it and it's really awesome and then you'll get put on her, her newsletter list so that when all of her stuff comes up and her webinars come up that you'll be able to jump in and learn more on how to get uh, yourself better publicity that's all i can say so sharon thanks so much for being with us thank you dave i've had a great time thank you so much for having me a guest on your show thank you it's been fun and, and i can't wait to hear about how everything uh goes uh, with, once once your launch goes so i'm on your newsletter list so i'll find out uh through the grapevine thank you very much dave Alrighty. again i want to thank you for joining us and investing your time with us today I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and if you did, go to iTunes and give us a shout-out. You can also go to our website, www.contractorsecretweapon.com, and check out today's episode and leave us a comment in the bottom of the page. And if you haven't gotten your 15 secret weapon strategies to getting higher-end customers, get it while you're at the website. Also, I want to thank again our sponsors for keeping this podcast alive for your profit-making pleasure. And so go be profitable this week. Work smarter, not harder, and learn how to leverage your time and your knowledge so that you can be more profitable. Again, see you next week. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast with Dave Negri. We would love to hear your comments about this episode, so visit us online at www.contractorsecretweapon.com and let us hear your thoughts. If you were listening via iTunes, please leave us a positive review. 
the more positive reviews we receive, the more other contractors will benefit from this show. Thank you, and see you next time here on the Contractor's Secret Weapon Podcast.